Hey, good morning. Good to see you on YouTube and Facebook Live. And we are Corinth Baptist Church, 1910 Camden Road in Hollow Hill, Box 69, Vance, South Carolina, 29163 is our mailing address. Corinth Church 1868 at gmail.com is our email, and CorinthBaptistChurch.org is our website. And so we would like for you to join us either where you're at or certainly come and be with us as we worship together. And we thank you for being with us today. And talking about missions, we have uh, we've seen several students going back to school at different times, but uh, probably most schools will be starting next week, college. And I think the uh, elementary and high schools, you can verify that, right? The high schools already started. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, Bryce and Allie, you guys have started school, right? Saw your pictures on Facebook. Love that little sign. That was pretty cool. And so, but uh, thinking of college students, now that, you know, they're there. And uh, we have, uh, participating with them, we had. Baptist Collegiate Ministries, BCM. And so we have on different campuses, not only in the state of South Carolina, but around the country, we have Baptist College or Collegiate Ministries who are there on campus to minister to the students. And so, especially if you know the freshmen, you're going to school, everything's new, uh, you may not know anybody, but uh, and you're away from your home church, and so these Baptist, BCM, Baptist Collegiate Ministries are there on campus to help these students as they navigate these times. Now, college is easy, right? I mean, it's simple, right? I mean, you breeze through that, right? I hear the groan. <laughs> and some of your memories are resurfacing in your mind right now about college. And so you know that it's not an easy thing. So we want to uh, remember the people who are working in the BCN, Baptist Collegiate Ministries, ministering to the students. Uh, whether they're believers or not, they want to minister to those students. So if they already know Jesus Christ, they can help them grow in their faith. And if they do not know Him, to introduce them to Him. And so that they can start their journey as new believers. So we'll pray for them. And then, so if you would stand, please. And we're going to sing the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. We'll stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. We'll sing that out the hell And then we'll sing the chorus of the solid rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all other ground to sing and stand. So you ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Here we go. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. So we need to not deviate from the truth. Know where it is. So let's sing the chorus of the solid rock on Christ the solid rock I sing. Savior. So thank you that we can be here together today. 
to worship and to have that time, this time together during this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? And you can look at that in your hymn book or on the screen. And we'll sing the first, the second, third, and fourth verses. And this is written by Isaac Watts. Remember, we talked about him. He actually wrote about 800 hymns. And sometimes he would write a hymn just specifically for a message that he was giving on that day. And so <clears throat> Isaac Watts did this. So let's sing this, Am I a Soldier of the Cross?
May his name be lifted high forever and ever. Now, we're talking about in the book, the letter of Jude. Y'all already singing the song again, right? Today, Jude. Yep, there you go again. So, we're looking at Jude, and he's talking about false teachers and what they are doing to the church, uh, the early church. And so, we have to be careful in what they are doing and what they are teaching. And that's why we need to know what God's Word says. Because then we can discern what is true versus what is false. Or what is true and what is truth mixed with error. Because that's what Satan uses a lot of time. It sounds good, but we need to dig down into it to see if, it, if there's really some error in it. Now, uh, there's a work that C.S. Lewis wrote. Does that name sound familiar to anybody? What? Chronicles of Narnia. Very good. There's another work that he wrote. And he has three main characters in it. He has a person. It's basically they're called the patient. That, that's all the name is. The patient. And then he has another character called Wormwood. Who is a junior demon. And then you have the senior demon whose name is Screwtape. He wrote a book called The Screwtape Letters. And so in this book, basically, the patient starts off as not being a Christian. And Wormwood's assignment, first assignment, is to prevent this person from becoming a Christian. And Screwtape is his mentor. He's helping him walk through this to make sure this person doesn't become a Christian. Well, as they go on, uh, they basically are working in the lower archy of hell. That's where they're working at. They're working for our Father below, talking about Satan. And they're working against the enemy, who is God. And so, they're basically, they have some thoughts, some strategies. They say, we want, they're talking about people. They say, we want cattle who can finally become food, but God wants servants who can finally become sons. And that's their strategy, that they know that. And then they said that God wants man to be concerned with what they do. Our business, screw tape and wormwood, is to keep them thinking about what will happen to them. And so, Wormwood is depicted, he's anxious, this is his first assignment, he wants to use all the big guns to get this guy and not, you know, to tempt him. And now, I'll just, spoiler alert, the patient does become a Christian. But then, what happens is Wormwood is trying to tempt this guy not to live a Christian life. So, I mean, he wants to go over the top. And he just wants to go at it, and I mean, just throw all kinds of stuff at it. But screw tape, he takes a different approach. He's more subtle, and this is what he tells Wormwood. He said the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, the soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. In other words, I'll use the smaller things to deter him away and to tempt him. And what we're looking at in the book of Jude is that is exactly what these false teachers do. They want to make, basically they want to give the safest road, but that's the one that leads to hell. They want to have the gentle slope, the soft underfoot, as, as Screwtape said, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. They want to deceive people into thinking that they're okay. And they don't have to worry about these things. But the false teachers want people to deny the truth. They deny the truth of Jesus Christ. And they live a lifestyle that's just, they just want to do whatever they want. And they want to steer people away. If, if they're already believers, they want to steer them away from serving God. If they're unbelievers, they want to steer them away where they'll never become believers. And so, in Jude chapter 1, there's only one chapter in Jude, okay? Chapter 1. Um, I found this out doing, uh, doing internet. If you type in Jude 8, it comes up. There is no Jude 8. Yeah, I just wanted verse 8. 
But you have to type in Jude 1, and then it comes up. And then you look at the verse. So in verse 8, it, you know, he's already given the introduction about the false teachers and what they've done and what their strategy. So he says, nevertheless, these dreamers likewise defile their flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme glorious ones. Now he's talking about these people are dreamers. They're delusional. They want to present something. They want to fantasize. They want to give you false claims. Have any of y'all ever talked to a dreamer? Somebody who dreams and they have big ideas and things. And you hear it and you hear it and you go, how do you do that? And, you know, they think about, you know, man, I can't wait. We're going to have a flying car. Y'all ever, ever heard somebody say that? Just say yes. Come on. <laughs> Or, or the thing we're looking at now is, uh, and it's in the works, is drive, basically self-driving vehicles where you don't even have to touch the wheel. Now, I've been on I-95, and I am fast becoming a proponent of self-driving vehicles because I've had to deal with these people driving vehicles before. Wow, it's insane. But basically, they're delusional. They have dreams and visions. And basically, they take up, steer you away from the Word of God. What did Satan tell Eve in the Garden of Eden when he was tempting her? If you eat this fruit, what did they say? You will be like God. And that's delusion because you can't be God. That was Satan's delusion. He wanted to be like the Most High. But he couldn't be God. And so these guys are dreamers. They want to do this. They have false doctrine. They want to steer people away from those things. They want people to grasp what is popular and not follow the truth of God. Albert Einstein once said, What is right is not always popular. And what is popular is not always right. And so we see these trends and these things that are popular, but are they really godly? Are they things that we should be following or listening to? We have to beware. The false teachers want you to do that. But you have to stay with God's word and the truth. Now, it says that they're dreamers. They defile their flesh. We talked about that last week with Sodom and Gomorrah. <clears throat> That's Jude used the example of Sodom and Gomorrah. For these people, they live their lifestyles with no constraints. They just say, whatever goes, I'll do whatever I want to. And so, they live a lifestyle that basically is a lifestyle you should not be living. And remember I said last week, uh, one of the uh, presentations on the ark that we went to, is this person, Noah was talking about the uh, why they were building the ark. And this guy said, what you call sin, I call freedom. What you call sin, I call freedom. And that's what we're seeing a lot of today. People uh, I want my freedom. Yeah, you talk about sin, and you get called a lot of names. But I want my freedom. And so, basically, they were, they, they were defiling their flesh. They were rejecting authority. Basically, sinning angels, the angels who sinned against God, they rejected his authority. Satan rejected his authority. And so these false teachers are rejecting God's authority. They say, God, no, 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 no. I'm, we're going to do what we want to do. Remember in the book of Judges? The last verse in there, basically the tribes went each to their own home and it says that each person did what was right in their own eyes. That means each person had their own truth. Have y'all heard that terminology today in different places? Well, what this is my truth. What's your truth? Well, you're entitled to your truth, but I'm entitled to my truth. What Do you see where that leads? You know, I'm right. And you're wrong. Well, no, I'm right and you're wrong. Y'all ever had that discussion before? <laughs> I'm right and you're wrong. You know, I'm right and you're wrong. No, 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 I'm right. Or you just don't say it. You just know you're right. But anyway, these people are rejecting authority. They toss God's word out the window. So they live a licentious lifestyle. <clears throat> they reject authority. And they blaspheme glorious ones. They speak evil of those who are in position. Positions of leadership and authority, they speak evil of them. Basically, they don't discuss it. They just, basically, they, the sin, have you seen it today? And I remember when we did debate in high school and college, 
you would start talking. You know, any of y'all ever been in a debate? Any of y'all in debates every day? Okay. But, you know, in debates, you know, you have the first person, they present their point. Maybe this, this person is for it, and this person is against it. So this person presents their argument for. This person counters with negative. This person for, this person negative, this person for, this person negative. Well, unfortunately, what we've got to in our society is if you present a counterpoint to what seemingly is popular, what happens? The name calling starts. Any y'all ever been in a discussion or an argument where you're talking to somebody and then the name calling starts? You idiot. You don't know what you're talking about, you dummy. Right? When you start calling names, you've lost. Because you don't have anything else to say. You've just reverted to calling names. And that's what's happening now. And that's what these people are doing here. They blaspheme glorious ones. They look at them, but they call them names instead of dealing with who they are. And so, they slander the glorious ones, and then it goes on to say, and they give an example. Now, when you read this, this is talking about Michael disputing with the devil in a debate about Moses' body. And probably you read that and you go, where is that in the Bible? It's not. It is an extra biblical book, an apocryphal book. But Jude's readers knew the story. They knew the tradition. And so if you read in Deuteronomy chapter 24, Moses could not go into the promised land. Remember why? Because, what? He didn't follow God's commandments. He didn't follow God's commandments. Instead of speaking to the rock and having the water come out, Moses just took his staff and just walloped that rock. And the water didn't come out. But God said, all right, you cannot go into the land because I told you to speak instead of him. And so, God buried Moses' body. And so, because Joshua then took over. But in this story, in an apocryphal book, they have a story about Michael basically dealing with Satan. Satan wanted his body. So I brought an enemy with me today. Uh, let's see. Doesn't he look lovely? <laughs> Y'all saw him this morning, right? And he looked in the mirror. No. <laughs> But can you imagine, here's Satan, and here's Michael, and Satan goes, Hey, Michael, I want Moses' body. He's dead. He doesn't need that body anymore. And Michael goes, No, you can't have it. And then Satan goes, Look, I'm the prince of the power of the air. I want the body. This is my domain. I'm the prince here. I'm the head guy here. And Michael goes, what do you think he said? No. Then he pulls out the sword. I like this. <laughs> so Michael pulls out the sword. And he says, no. And then Satan goes, look, you pipsqueak. Now he didn't say that because Satan, Lucifer, was the highest angel created. And he is powerful. And he said, look, Michael. You're lower than I am. Oh, excuse me. You're lower than I am. Give me the body of Moses now. Now, Michael was the archangel. And he was, he was pretty powerful himself. But actually, Lucifer has more power. And so what did, as, as far as Jude in this story, what was the response for Michael? He did not call Lucifer names. He didn't? Oh, he'd have probably been tempted. He, he was tempted, but he didn't do it. He just looked at Satan and he said, The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. I don't want to put these up now, okay? All right. All right. But we can have playtime after church. So. Michael was saying, the Lord rebuke you. Now, he didn't come after him. He weighed his words carefully. He basically was letting God intervene in this situation. He did not want to deal 
Uh, he couldn't deal with Lucifer on a one-to-one -one scale because of who he was. But he said, the Lord rebuked you. The Lord rebuked you. And that's an example of how we ought to, basically, when we confront Satan, we need to do it in that way. Now, we have some people that try and, uh, you know, we're created a little lower than the angels. Psalms tells us that. And so we have to be careful when we deal with Satan because he's there. He's an enemy. He's coming after us every day. Peter says he's like a lion who's coming at us all the time, like a lion who wants to eat us. And so we need to basically, we can't take on Satan by ourselves. Some people try, and but they can't do it. And so Michael just said, the Lord rebuke you. You ever, but some people want to, you ever heard the saying, fools rush in where angels fear to tread? Did y'all know that Elvis has a song by that title? Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. I mean, it's there. I, I said, really? And I looked it up, and there it is. You didn't know that? I, I knew it. But then when I saw the reference, I said, well, I need to look at the lyrics. You know, But he has a song. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. But a fool is somebody who goes in not knowing. They're not prepared. They're not ready. They don't learn anything about the situation. So you don't rush into these things. And so, basically, Michael is saying, just say the Lord rebuke you. That's how you fight him. And then, basically, the Lord, uh, but these people, the false teachers, they blaspheme anything they don't understand. What they don't understand, you know, have you ever been in a discussion or uh, with somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about? Every day? Every other day? You know? They just don't know what they're talking about, but they have an opinion, right? They have an opinion, but they don't know really what they're talking about, and they can't back it up. Well, these people, these false teachers are doing the same thing. They're talking about things they don't really know about, but they want to make it sound good, and they want to gloss over it and make it to where you might believe it or make it believable. But basically, they're blaspheming. These people, they, they're blaspheming anything they don't understand. So they always talk against God, and against the Bible, against Jesus Christ. I remember sitting in a, a meeting years ago. I went to the Southern Baptist Convention. I think it was in Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, you have your messenger and you vote on things. And it was crazy. They, they had a vote on something about the Bible as God's word and something, something. I don't remember all the wording. You know, and all those for it. You know, raise your hand. And all those against it. And there were 12 people sitting near me that all raised their hands against it. And I thought, what? And then they were talking to somebody. I said, why'd you do that? Well, I just didn't want it to be unanimous. I said, what? <laughs> they said it. They said, I just didn't want it to be unanimous. So I voted against it. Don't you love people? They just don't you love it. And so these people... Basically, what they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, they destroy themselves with these things. They want to live their lives like they want to. They're living like animals. Animals function by instinct, but we should be functioning by reasoning, by following God's word, what is true. But these people were like animals, just going on instinct, following their sinful nature, doing whatever they wanted to do. And they forgot about, uh, basically, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, where Paul writes, he says... Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? He says, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so they're just living their life like they want to. Just like, almost like animals just living by instinct. But then he says, these guys, they're destroying themselves with these things. They're not going to live. They're going to destroy themselves. And so he goes, these people, what are they doing? Woe to them. Now, whenever you see woe to them, you're not driving them whack, okay? And I say woe. Woe to them means beware. Watch out. It's like a curse. Isaiah used it and when he was talking to the people who didn't believe God. Jesus used it with the scribes and the Pharisees. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. And he was so nice. You snakes. Is that a compliment? Any y'all call any y'all been called a snake? Y'all been called other things, right? But not a snake. Okay. Well, 
Woe to you, because this is the way you're going. Be aware. That judgment is coming. And then he cited three examples from Scripture. He said, For you have traveled in the way of Cain. Do you remember Cain? In Genesis. Cain, the firstborn of Adam and Eve. Abel was the next one. They were supposed to come and worship God, bring sacrifices. Cain brought stuff out of his garden. Abel brought a 